Finish it. 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 Finish Demo. So I'm going to set high expectations here. That that's worth uh, excusing them for the final push. So at some point they should show up. Uh, so, Kieran, if you just want to maybe start with Jane and All right, let's pin around. work your way around the room. I'll uh, back and forth with that rocker. A little switch. Yeah. Lights will come back. Okay. Okay. You're on. All right. Well, I've had a lot of help from several people um, in the last couple of days, which is great. And I've about convinced myself that I need to learn Linux. So <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be some kind of victory. Um, <laughs> uh, no, what's that? <laughs> um, uh, basically, um, TJ and I are trying to um, test out Sage Tech for virtual machine. And um, I also um, updated the README that goes with the Sage 4.7 download for virtual machine. Um, so that's um, up on the web. Little um, adjustment that needed to be made to it. So maybe a new version in the next day or two. So, so besides poking around with Jane during downtime while uh, she was learning some Linux, I, I kept working on some of the linear algebra stuff for my class next year. I gave a talk on Sage Tech, which seemed pretty well received, and I, so well received that I think I'm going to try and do some screencasts. Mm -hmm. um, and talking to people afterwards, I have a lot of new ideas for little bits of documentation changes and new code for Sage Tech and so on. So I have lots of ideas now. Uh, so I have uh, pretty much fixed uh, what I wanted to fix uh, during this um, Sage days. Uh, and so today I was working on uh, reviewing a bunch of other tickets uh, and uh, fixing some other bugs uh, related to IT Hank. So let's see. Mainly I went to a whole bunch of talks and recorded a lot of video and posted it. Um, which took a lot of time. Talked to people, and I talked to. I drove Mike Hansen to the airport and talked to him about his grand plans related to the notebook. And um, he gave me a tour of all the patches that he created over the last two days, based on a huge patch that Matish Patel had posted long ago. Um, so he's broken it up into about ten separate patches, each of which make logical sense and do things like switching the communication between the client and the server to use JSON and so on. Um, so that stuff looked really, really good, and he had actually finished doing this, but he was working on getting it to actually work. So that's work in progress, but we're hoping in the next few days that that will get done and get pushed into Rado's branch of the notebook. Um, and on the way to the airport, we talked about things like using SQL Alchemy to database the notebook server. So. taught Kieran how to use the video camera. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I learned how to use the video camera. Uh, I sat in a bunch of talks, um, learned lots of neat things about Sage Tech and, and uh, about linear algebra and abstract algebra and so on. Um, uh, we worked, several of us were working on a uh, little bit of get, learning how to use Singular from within Sage. Um, I worked on some assorted number theory tickets on track, and uh, we had the PI meeting, which Oya oh, hasn't mentioned. Okay, so, uh, actually, uh, let's switch this back then. Okay. Ready? Okay. Um, so I also uh, got a lot of useful ideas at the talks today. Um, I tested my Sage build, and uh, exception of one doc test that failed with R, which I don't use. Um, it's working, and um, the code that wasn't working on my previous uh, build of Sage uh, is working now, and um, so now I have to work on documenting it and putting it up for a patch. Um, I have uh, 
been working on merging the fantastic work Ira has been doing. I'll let him talk about that, uh, as well as uh, helping just various random people with various random things, and uh, and I guess the PI meeting and I think that pretty much covers it. I'll go ahead and give the status report for Ryan since he just left for the airport. Um, he just put up on GitHub uh, the first chapter of the BYU uh, lab manual and asked me to pull it and tech it. Of course, it's illegal for me to pull it because he hasn't, they haven't decided on an open source license, so <laughs> they still have the copyright up. But anyway, so I'm uh, helping them move their code and Ryan's moving their code to GitHub. Okay. Uh, I... Well, I, uh, last night I got the embeddable single cell notebook working in Firefox, but it still doesn't work in Chrome and Safari because of the bug in those browsers. Um, but, and then today I also worked on some small fixes and stuff. So I mostly worked on the Pinex stuff, the, that's now finished, we'll, I think I reviewed Pussin stuff and the, I'm pretty happy with the state right now, there's some minor, minor nitpicks, we need to fix the doc test that changed because we have now a well-defined order of these symbolic things, but that's the only thing that's really left and I'm pretty happy with the state there. I also did some minor things with the Atlas S package that should be updated at one point. And the William found um, a bug in libgap that I tried to debug but didn't get very far. So, I mean, unfortunately, I had only 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I gave a talk this morning, uh, attended the utmost PI meeting, and my big accomplishment of the day was getting the textbook conversion process working on my computer with uh, thanks and Sage Tech, thanks to Rob and Jason, um, and found that the textbook conversion process, you have to be very, very careful of the latex source code. <laughs> Bad code will not convert. <laughs> Uh, I guess I've been randomly working on random organizational tasks, but I've had a lot of good conversations and been able to help people like Tom with little things uh, as they need things that I know about. Uh, and I may randomly write my talk this evening at some point for tomorrow, so I doubt if that happens. Why don't we, uh, do we call it Michael Gage now with the web yeah, work stuff? Okay. So I've been working with two things. We're embedding things in web work and embedding web work in, in things, Sage in particular. And uh, Jason will talk about the latter. I'll just talk about the former, two quick things, which are not really much of my work. But we made, we made it possible so that you can embed things like Jmol in or basically anything <laughs> that you can embed in a web page. You can now embed in, in in web work, even nor, nor, sometimes you're messed up by the fact that you're inside a form, but this section of web work is not inside a form, it's above the main problem. So you can't interact with it too much, but you can at least present things. So that's good. And um, the other <laughs> thing is, what's the correct answer? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Absolutely. Can, can we see it actually? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, absolutely. Um, but I need uh, some help here. <laughs> now it's right. <laughs> Which one? Right. Right. Now it's right. Does it change the answer? Do we get our Canadian bar? Actual studies. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Collective. Uh, yeah. and so what is this Jmol inside of Sage inside of WebWorks? No. No. Oh, okay. No, this is uh, so basically. In this case, basically, what I've got is a local. Uh, Demonstration. I've got a local uh, web page, the equivalent of a local web page of, J of Jmol. So it's calling out to Jmol wherever wherever it is. <laughs> uh, but it's it's like it's just a local web page. 
But you can, I mean, you could use it for, for reasonable things here. Uh, you just, you can't interact with it a lot, but at least it's on a web page, the same web page where the question is, as opposed to having to have it on a web page. But you is. invited JMOL into WebWork. So we have embedded JMOL, so you can bring up JMOL applets inside of WebWork. Right. Ways they work. Okay. And this is really Ira and Jason's work, the, the server side but on the consumer side, why we've got, uh, this is a single cell Sage applet. So, let's try it and see. Nice. Ta -da. And then down there you can put a question. Like this actually is embedded in there? Well, this is, this is again at the top. So this is the bottom of the cell. And so this is the bottom of where the JMOL thing was. And then down here is is where the regular question is. So you could put a Once question. Once the derivative of x like squared, they could go up and compute x squared. And <laughs> they come out and do it. Right. And, and they could, could use it as a calculator. If they, they, they could use it as a calculator if you want. So we didn't have time to put start putting okay. questions in and actually put this in. Fun. So yes. I might add that uh, this works in Firefox right at the moment. <laughs> Everybody else's security is still too steep. <laughs> yes? Um, is, is the stage going to be included in my work? Or is it I don't think we're anywhere close to, to that right at the moment. Um, the whole point of this is that it's a web service. You can call out the sage and you or know, this is calling the sage math.org. Okay, so, 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 so for example. So sage is elsewhere, and it's, it's right. talking some sage. Right, sage so this is, this is okay. the sage that Jason has set up. This is the web work running on my local serv server. Well, that is on the Mac right here, which is the only one in the world that has this little, <laughs> it's the only version of web work in the world that has this ability to put things up there. So I'll try and commit that to our development <laughs> server before I leave, so, <laughs> in case there's an airline accident or something. <laughs> 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 you won't have to reinvent everything. <laughs> Can you show us a That's real a Sage example? If there's not mind you buy it then. <laughs> ah, so, um, Prime pot. That's all. <laughs> You're so mean to him. Something like that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, uh, it's very it's big. Big. I got one of those digits. <laughs> 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 that scrolls off, so we uh, yeah, yeah, so got a scroll bar in there or something. But, yeah. Yeah, so we can have some scroll bars and things like that. So this is a div without much information in it. So um, And right at the moment, they seem to be stacking up on top of each other, which is, uh, I guess, a feature. I will declare it a feature. <laughs> you can have two interacts running at the same time here. Sorry? You can have two interacts running at the same time, for example. So you can do an interact, then change things, do another interact, and have them both working at the same time. Right. Yeah. This this seems to be yeah. So this seems to be creating a new div each time. So actually, this is this is still really more your feature than. Right. Than we do whatever. Yeah. Yes. Uh, is there an option to have the latest evaluated at the top? Um, so you don't have to scroll down. Yeah. Of course. It just needs to be programmed. So it's a bit of patch. <laughs> Easy. Yep. Yes, totally. Easy. So there's no way Sage and WebWorker are talking back and forth there. They're just using each other or on top of each other. Well, yes, yes and no. They are talking to each other, but um, so in some ways, actually, the the question of uh, having Sage evaluate one of the students' answers is, uh, I mean, I've got ideas about how to do that, but we got kind of caught up in the two things that the thing I'm showing you here and the thing that Jason and I worked on, so I haven't done that yet. Can those attempts be saved in the regular web work um, answer? Not yet. Okay. That would be useful. Really useful. Right. Right. So uh, the, I mean, I, I so, so in particular, if you have Sage running on the same machine that web work is running on, then the problem of, say, you know, like web work probably couldn't factor large numbers really quickly or do really large factorials. Just by calling out to the command line and calling to Sage, um, that in principle seems relatively easy to me. It's just you know, I was hoping to get to it. Um, the question of calling to Sage remotely depends on us getting the re any remaining uh, uh, cross-site type issues uh, satisfied. 
Let's see, should we continue with Carl Dieter? So, um, yeah, for continuing the status report, so I wrote a talk and gave a talk. Uh, that, that was some of it. And then last night, Jane and I worked hard on uh, the, the virtual box notes and things, uh, which this is a nice. really awesome development. And I helped a lot of people with a lot of miscellaneous things and questions that they had. And so now I guess the next thing to do is review all the patches that everybody created uh, at this wonderful safe days. Oh yeah, I did prep office hours. That was great. They had some really good questions and somebody's gonna type up some nice documentation for how to do vector ODE solving using the Sage functions. Yeah, Eve is a, he's a monster. He just keeps on making new awesome worksheets out of nowhere. Yeah. Okay, let's see if I can have So I just all you do is just rotate it. Yeah. I was mainly working on the symbolics and this, all the change. I reviewed focus patches and then all the new stuff that is going into Pinec for this. I also reviewed a couple of other symbolics tickets. And well, I inadvertently volunteered to quickly decide that a symbolic expression is zero using numeric tricks. I brought up something simple and gave up. <laughs> Five random points. <laughs> yeah, then it was coercing to CIF and then yeah. checking, but I realized that it doesn't really give you any information even if you coerce to CIF. You need to play with precision. Yeah. So we also discussed with Zaf about well, how to implement an int method for symbolic expressions. There are two parts related to this. Mm -hmm. on the like, symbolic component and we decided that's a hard problem as well. I spent a lot of time tracking down some documentation building errors that the new class notebook has introduced mm. um, and I finally found them but along the way I also um, found some stuff to patch in our documentation build system and so I'm working on some possible tickets for that. I'm not sure if I'll end up actually doing anything but just some efficiency stuff. Um, and now I'm trying to upgrade TinyMCE and see if it works in the class notebook. Uh, I think Jason was maybe working on this before. I don't know how far he got so maybe I'll go and talk to him if I have a chance. The class notebook has the most recent TinyMCE as of oh, does it? a couple weeks ago. Oh, I looked in there and said something like Mark. I thought, no? Yeah, probably Mark is going to have great All right. Well, there was some bug about uh, at symbols in usernames. Was that fixed? Uh, Carl Dieter says oh. no, it's not been fixed. I don't know. What, but oh. what, what notebook servers have that tiny MC? I mean, Sageadb.org and all those servers pulled the updated JavaScript stuff. Just yeah. I'll, I'll, so yesterday, I'll, I'll just yeah. try and make a username and see if yeah. it works. I think Rado. Well, well, well. I, you you put the new tiny MC around March, so right or? That sounds about right. Yeah. So I pulled from it. So that's the new tiny MC is in there. Two days ago, uh, I think Mike mentioned that. So actually, I disallowed at as a username in the Flask versions. In the left. Yeah, but I don't think we, I don't know if William pulled before or after I did that. When did so you do that? That was yesterday or. Uh, it's a ticket on maybe, both maybe the Google not. code yeah. and on the track. Yeah, the it's, track. Well, Probably it's not. I, okay. So, uh, but so you don't I think Tiny MC fixed it? I disallowed it, and that's why I told Cash to check if actually there's a way to fix it, and I'm then we gonna, can allow it again. I'm just gonna make a name that has. Good. So Um, yeah, so I continue to work on the conversion from REST to uh, Sage worksheet. So especially I made my code more robust. And by uh, doing this, I found a little small bug when when we upload the files in, in the notebook. Like, well, one of them was uh, pointed out by William Stein. The the worksheet that HTML, which is in the directory, uh, uh, contains the TXT 
file, but since the extension is HTML, this was not working when we wanted to uh, upload it because it's the extension HTML, it was thinking it was a Sphinx uh, file. So this now works. Another thing is we can upload a zip archive of uh, Sage worksheet, but it must be SWS extension, all of them. It doesn't work if you can contains other uh, type of files. So I'm, I'm also going to fix this. And uh, yeah, that's it. I, I think I will be able to, uh, to post on the Sage notebook uh, Google code my, uh, my patch. Uh, before the end of the day, I think I will be able to finish it by the end of the day. Cool. Great. So, uh, see, I fixed some small bugs that were in the Flask notebook still from the from the rewrite. Uh, there was an issue with published worksheets that uh, images were not showing and rating was disabled. So now the, both of those work. I got two bug fixes from uh, and from Sebastian, and I reviewed them and merged them. And I was helping web work, guys. Yesterday, most of uh, the time, we discussed with Burton about the bug set, so this is not solved. Uh, but it was an interesting discussion. <laughs> The two S packages I upload them in a track for Libya and Latte. And the translation I didn't continue yesterday. I know that I will not finish until uh, Sunday, but I will keep going. Translation of the notebook to Greek. And I'm planning to work on uh, symbolic bugs that are solvable or not. And maybe review some of this. Okay. <coughs> so, so I'm one of the red dot people helped by Cow Ditter. <laughs> And so now I learned how to write some Python code and create functions with its own dot pod method. So this is pretty cool, I think. And also one of the random persons helped by Jason that I now learn how to create a link to the sage tab dot style file. And I actually learned this enough so that I can help other people to do that. I've been able to get some more stuff to put up on the wiki. I've been trying to investigate a problem, and I've been able to help a few people with um, code and interacts. I've uh, listened to a lot of interesting presentations and conversations, most of which were technically far above my head, uh, but uh, that's okay. I didn't expect it to be different, but uh, uh, got some ideas about how uh, this community might, you know, be be uh, supported by the MAA, and look forward to follow it up on that, including some next week when we have a, a web work workshop in uh, Washington D.C. next week, and I'm sure that some of what happened this week will be feeding into what we talk about next week. So that's a good thing. And um, in fact, John Travis sitting next to me is going to be spending the next almost three weeks, right, in DC uh, as a, a visiting mathematician to work on some of these uh, things as well. So lots of lots of interesting ideas. And Carl Dieter helped me to build my own in my first day ever to even do anything in Sage to build an interactive window that uh, computes several iterates of Newton's method and graphs them and so forth. So I've learned lots of sneaky things that now I can go play with just for the heck of it since I don't even teach anymore. <laughs> but I'll have fun because I like it. Should I do the part two of our demonstration? Okay. I don't know if my network is uh,
<laughs> well, okay. So uh, Mike and I, and, and Rado has helped tremendously with, uh, with this project, um, have also been trying to get web work problems in the Sage Notebook, and we wrote up a little description of uh, what we were trying to do and published this on the flask.sagemb.org uh, uh, server, if you guys want to take a look at it. How we use the XML RPC, uh, Python lib, and the XML RPC uh, um, uh, web service provided by WebWork uh, to do this. So you can read through and, uh, and see the details. Um, we sort of went through three iterations. Um, one iteration uh, with the help of Bruce, his idea of embedding with just an iframe. Um, and then eventually we figured out we could use this uh, web service and get it to look pretty nice in, inside the Sage uh, notebook. Uh, the next step was getting it to post back student answers that were submitted. And um, so we've got that in a stage now where it posts back in an iframe in, in the Sage notebook. Um, but with Rado's help, we've got made a lot of progress on uh, being able to post back in the same div so it just sort of updates in place and so that's pretty cool we're pretty excited about the possibilities in particular what um, what I mean we're particularly interested in is uh, just kind of this is what the, um, the source code for a web work problem looks like and uh, you know you could go right in the sage notebook and edit this and you would have all the surrounding uh, computer algebra system capabilities and others calculating capabilities um, so a web or problem author could come in here and write these problems um, and then you know set it up more nicely. Um, but then uh, they'll come down here and uh, submit this. And this, uh, this is some of this cell ID stuff. It has some of Rado's magic that he helped us with. Um, so the student would right now put in some answers. So now, actually what it's supposed to do, and this is something Mike and I wanted to mention, is that um, when it's behaving nicely, it posts back in this iframe. And there seems to be a problem with it kind of getting stuck in the notebook. Um, so let's see, if I delete this, copy it, yeah. Um, okay, and then I'll uh, delete, yeah. delete that. Okay. And then make it so that gets rid of um, that stuff. This might be a bug in the notebook. It's kind of hard to say. There's a lot of them post it back. See what? Um, it doesn't work if you don't have a unique uh, ID for the div, but we do um, doing this. And then if we uh, now evaluate, so it goes out to the web service. Do you didn't evaluate anything. Yeah. About this. Uh, we need to evaluate the whole. Action, evaluate all. No, action. Yeah, that's a good one. For some reason, I just didn't evaluate that one. Okay, so now we evaluate this one. Okay. And it gets the problem back. This is our first version of the problem. And then, uh, got it working before we came over, but... Uh, no, this, that, was, that was working. That worked. It was to a separate page. No, but it, didn't, oh, it shouldn't oh, go. It should go in oh, it went to a separate one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well... Well, this is one of the yeah. this is one of the things we we're still working on minutes before we okay. came in here. So the point is that we have set this up in principle. In theory, it's correct the way it's set up. The iframe has a... The form has a target, which is the ID of the iframe. And it should, and it's a unique ID the way router shows are set up. So it should really put the content in here 
and it does occasionally, but it's really <laughs> fragile. And so um, we're not sure how to fix that. The next thing we're going to do is um, get, get this where we have this function that just takes these out of the form, puts them back into the original input table, submits them back to the web service, and updates in place. And then we're going to have the great problem authoring environment. We're going to be able to upload it to web service and stuff. That's our grand plan. Might take a while, but so someone could just open up a Sage worksheet. Maybe yeah. up at the top instead of the Sage evaluate, say you know web worker evaluate. I don't know. Could do, could do a percent, percent web work or something. And yeah, that would be cool. Just, like, yeah, we could. I mean, if we get a few more bugs fixed, we could use some some expertise in packaging this properly because I'm sure we've done some things that aren't quite right. Okay. They weren't, but they, they aren't quite right. right. So we can do a percent web work and then we will like upload it to a server. And <coughs> right. Yeah. But but the idea would be that you could edit you could edit problems here where you've got you know, access to the Sage browser, that's so the Sage you know, facilities for computing things and so on. So you don't have to use Perl. Well. Or, or that's in well, if you look at this is Perl. Okay. Uh, so now this is this is uh, actually a kind of a complicated problem because this not only has the text, which between begin text and end text there, that's what you normally write for a problem. But this one actually has a custom grader that that you know figures out so there's some partial credit and some non-partial credit and so on and so forth, which shows the flexibility. But that's not something that you would normally. Uh, the, the normal person would write like somebody who is really fussy. And here's about how the in triple quotes. So it's one big string. Yeah. Right? Yes, that's right. This is this is at the very top up there. We're just the problem is just a big string. So that's that's how this thing was. Yeah. So if you guys had a good way, like if you had um, some web service stuff in there, and so the you know we people would want to authenticate to their web work server, right? So if there's a good way to put in a username and a password in the sort of call out to the web service without it being sort of publicly available, right? Yeah, maybe um, we could do a web work object, right? So they just type in web work and you know, type in their username and password, evaluate it, that sets up a session on the server side to talk to web work, yeah. and then say like web work dot create new problem and then pass it this yeah. big string. That'll actually be the Sage server talking to web work rather than the notebook talking to the web work. Yeah. Um, That's right. So like you could do like they could instantiate some kind of web work thing and they could go like web work get sets, right? And yeah. list their sets or right. web work, right? You know. Like that. That'd be really yeah, cool. there's, this, this is this is the world's open. The yeah. very this is the very beginning yeah. of what right. what's possible. It's really yeah, this, right proves it's, right? this proves it's possible, okay. right? This, so, this okay. might actually be enough stuff so that right. you could write a grant, that'd be a right. small a development grant. Sure. Not a huge one, but yeah. small, yeah. small enough to pay some students to work on it or something. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Any questions? Okay, thanks. Thank you. and do some more status reports. Let's see if I can get that going. Okay. That's about as much as I can do here, I think. Do you want me to zoom in on the screen? This more so, uh, can everyone see this? Hold on. The maybe, camera. Maybe, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, it would be nicer if this was hooked up to the. Yeah, then everybody else could see it. Could you zoom in really close? I'm trying. Okay, so there's a tech file, then a lick file, and then a, uh, <coughs> and a slide. I think. Well, not just one slide. Well, lots there of slides. There are slides. Oh, wait. Did you just convert this? You converted your Calc 1 worksheets? For words are many, sin is not wanting. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That was a longer time. I did one. To Beamer? Or to? Yeah, I converted one to Beamer. To be oh. So hopefully the rest of it looks very pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're also using Lick to do it. Well, converting them to Lick. OK. And then it's Beamer. Then it's easy to deal with. I hope. Cool. More? 
open source content. Hey. <laughs> okay, well, last night, with a lot of help from Kyle Dieter,